Hi guys. Well, <laughs> what a day, what a night. But it is a blissfully cool and rainy summer night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Now at least the smoke has blown and been washed out of the air for the time being. And on this lovely Sunday evening, it is July 2nd. 2023 and uh, so last night <clears throat> we checked in with what is going on over in France so you know I've been I was just wondering recently uh, whatever happened to all of those whatever it was 33 million people in Pakistan who got all flooded out last year and stuff, and uh, lo and behold, good old Bloomberg has given us an update of what it and what is happening in Pakistan in this long involved article, which I'm not going to get all the way through. I'll put the link on. You can read it yourself. Titled "A Thirty Billion Dollar Disaster." is just the tip of a deadly climate cycle. So this is what it looks like in, Pakistan, in a Pakistani refugee camp. Uh, <laughs> I wonder how much they can rent those tents out for on uh, at Airbnb. I wonder how many of those tents are sitting on Pakistan Airbnb right now. Uh, so anyway, I uh, <laughs> take a wild guess why I, of all the doom and gloom, why did Sam Mitchell choose this story? See if you can get a hint in the first paragraph. <clears throat> take it away, Bloomberg. When night falls in the refugee camp outside Karachi, Shanawaz Koso, worries about snake bites, the 38-year-old and his seven children, the 38-year-old and his seven children <clears throat> sleep in tents along 5,000 other displaced villagers partially exposed to the elements and the creatures that include scorpions and venomous snakes when the sun rises stifling heat heat and mountains of untreated sewage turn the camp into a breeding ground for disease fever and stomach pain are prevalent but there are no doctors, and there is no medicine. We are living here out of necessity, the father of seven says. Nothing is coming here now. We are terrified. Close quote. With monsoon season fast approaching, Pakistan has already seen heavy rains and strong winds, resulting in dozens of fatalities, hundreds of injuries and damage to roads, houses, and farmland. This year, the rain, though the rain is falling on a country still reeling. Just 10 months ago, it was 10 months ago, Severe flooding in Pakistan killed over 1,700 people, displaced 8 million, and cost the economy more than $30 billion. Now, crop shortages linger, thousands remain homeless, and the country is struggling with rebuilding, food supply, health care, and debt. Relief aid has largely dried up as new rains threaten the same areas hit by last year's floods. Pakistan finds itself at the mercy of a pernicious pattern. Clueless morons keep breeding and breeding and breeding, which 
causes more people to end up starving in refugee camps. Anyway, that was not what the mainstream media said. That was the what you can read between the lines. This is a truth-telling show. Wouldn't you love it if the mainstream media would actually, you know, like one time, you know, just pull off the gloves, you know, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I wonder how many of these 5,000 refugees in this camp you know, our children in seven child families or whatever. Yes. Pakistan finds itself at the mercy of a pernicious problem. Climate change is driving more intense rainfall, which drives more intense flooding, which stymies recovery from past floods. And, uh, you know, as soon as they recover from this one, another one, just as big or bigger, is going to come along. And then this dude and his seven children uh, are, are going to head back to the tent and hold their hand out uh, for $30 billion uh, for the rest of the world to uh, send his seven children, who never should have been born, more food. And, uh, you know, Fort Myers, all those clueless morons, such as my brother and Fort Myers, uh, rebuilding their homes down there uh, in Fort Myers, are going to get blown away again in the next hurricane. And all the people in Paradise, California, rebuilding their houses, uh, are, are going to get their houses burned down again in the next wildfire. And uh, this story goes on and on and on uh, ad finitum. The uh, big difference, of course, between uh, Fort Myers and Paradise, California and Pakistan is you don't see many families with seven children living in UN refugee camps. Okay, but anyway, it is a paradigm familiar to the other eight countries in what is known as the third pole. The third pole, which is facing the impacts of warmer air on both monsoons and melting mountain ice. Glaciers in Asia's Hindu Kush Himalayan region could lose 80% of their current volume by the end of this century, according to a recent study threatening the livelihoods of as many as two billion people downstream, not counting uh, all of the uh, children that the seven children in this refu refugee tent, so each one of them are going to have seven children, and, it, and this number is going to be a hell of a lot bigger than two billion. Uh, so, uh, assuming the number stayed at it, 2 billion, this is roughly a quarter of the world's population right now is dependent on glaciers that will pretty much be gone uh, in the next few decades. Without effective mechanisms to finance their own recoveries, let alone prepare for future climate crises, developing nations are particularly unprepared, said David Milbrand, president of the International Rescue Committee, a humanitarian aid group, quote, Pakistan is an avatar for what happens when climate vulnerable countries that are not climate resilient are in the firing line of changed weather conditions. They are on the front lines of something that is going to be faced by other countries. Close quote. Koso and his family, 
you know, his Koso, his wife, and seven kids moved to the refugee camp last August after his hometown of Shikarpur was inundated. But within two months, relief aid to the camp started to run out. First, food supply uh, food supply dwindled, then electricity was shut off, then the two health clinics closed. Located roughly 65 kilometers or 40 miles from Karachi, the camp is too far for Koso to find work on foot, but returning to Shikapur is not an option. The rice paddies on which his family depended were lost in the flood. Quote, we use money from one crop to invest in the next one, he says. That cycle has been broken. While Pakistan is no stranger to monsoons, 2022 was unprecedented. Flooding lasted more than four months and at its height left a third of the country submerged. The worst climate disaster in the country's history, the floods were responsible for an economic hit of more than $30 billion, or roughly 10% of Pakistan's 2021 economic output. In many regions, little has improved since. Across Sindh province, where more than half of schools were damaged by the flood water. Children continue to study in the open. Pakistan's foreign minister uh, said in May, stagnant water has fueled the worst malaria outbreak in the country since 1973, according to the World Health Organization. Few rural clinics remain standing to provide much needed medical treatment. Among all the challenges, though, the biggest might now be food. The flood's impact on livestock and farmland has limited Pakistan's ability to feed its own citizens. Ten and a half million people, or about 5% of the population, are now experiencing acute food insecurity. The Pakistani rupees 30% decline against the dollar over the past year has also made imported food uh, more expensive. Um, Pakistan is facing a nutrition crisis, the UN warned last month. The country's rate of secure acute malnutrition is twice the average for South Asia and four times higher than the global average. Uh, Pakistan Climate Minister Sherry Remen said, quote, I am very concerned that 33 million impacted people is not a number that any country has ever had to deal with as a single disaster. It is going to be very tough to rebuild even in three years, when, of course, in the next three years, it's all going to happen again. And then they talk about the lack of funding. Many blame the lack of progress on the lack of funding that uh, nobody is coughing up. Uh, you know, people, uh, it's called donor uh, fatigue. And then they talk all about this loss and damage. Uh, you, you know, this thing about that you've heard a million times that all these people and their seven kids uh, aren't producing any global greenhouse gas emissions, so they should just get a pass to have 27 kids. Uh, all of this crap about this loss and damage, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not buying it. Um, you know, that no progress 
uh, a a absolutely no uh, progress being made along there. Pakistan's slow recovery is creating a vicious cycle. Crop shortages caused by the flooding drove up food prices. Then the government raised taxes and energy prices in an attempt to meet the terms of a loan deal with the International Monetary Fund. That, in turn, pushed up inflation, which hit 38% in May compared to a year earlier. Pakistanis started cutting back on spending and job opportunities dried up. Uh, in a village near Jamshoro City, it's not uncommon now to see roofs made of plastic bags or houses missing <clears throat> walls. Five villagers there tell Bloomberg they have not received any funding for reconstruction and none can afford to make repairs. Quote, I am just desperate. What can I do? asked Fatah Mohammed, who supports a family of 18. What can I do? asked Fatah Mohammed, who supports a family of 18 by uh, doing odd jobs. Five years ago, Mohammed earned a daily wage of 500 to 1,000 rupees, otherwise known as a $1.76 to $3.50. Now he makes less than 300 rupees a day, barely enough to buy flour. Oh. As a changing climate makes rainfall and other extreme weather more intense, experts say Pakistan's experience will be replicated elsewhere. Any country's recovery efforts depend on how quickly and effectively authorities can marshal resources, allocate funds, and complete the work of rebuilding. That puts developing countries at a self-perpetuating disadvantage. Uh, talk about self-putting developing countries at a self-perpetuating uh, disadvantage. This goes on and on and on. Uh, I like Miles' comment. God is my witness. I said this back in the 1980s in high school that I was extremely concerned about overpopulation. I even donated money to groups that promote population control a few years later in my 30s. I have no sympathy. I have no sympathy for selfish, irresponsible, reckless choices for humans in general. God has a plan if you don't fix it, and it is called Mother Nature. Seven thumbs up, and this fellow named Humpty Dumpty, the 38-year-old and his seven children. Fatah Mohammed, who supports a family of 18. Blah, 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 yawn. You made your 18 beds. Go lie in them and don't hold your hand out to the rest of the world to bail you out. Anyway, I have to get back to being, I have some drama going on. Uh, this is one of my lost in the rain vacation rental guest. It's 
let me get back to being a vacation rental host. Get out there and enjoy vacation rentals while you still can. Bye, guys.